In this video, we will perform a linear buckling analysis using hypermesh and optistruct. This type of analysis is crucial to predict the failure of components which have high slenderness ratio. We will perform linear buckling analysis to evaluate the critical buckling load for a mechanical hopper assembly. The first 10 buckling modes will be visualized to get an idea about how the hopper assembly will fail under compressive loading conditions. Let's get right into it. The link for the CAD model used in this video is provided in the description. Feel free to download the CAD and follow this video step by step to get a clear understanding of the overall setup process. The first step is to assign a material and property to all the components in the model. We will also create RBE2 rigid elements to pinpoint the locations of force application. After importing the geometry, it is separated into two different parts as shown, the supporting frame and the hopper. Let's start by creating a new material. Provide a name to it. The first material will have default mechanical properties of steel. This will be assigned to the supporting frame. Duplicate this material and change its name. Now we will enter the mechanical properties of aluminum. The aluminum material will have lower strength as compared to steel. Create a new property and provide a name to it. Select the steel material in selection box. Enter the value of thickness as 5 mm. Duplicate this property for a different thickness value. Let's change the material selection to aluminum. Enter value of thickness as 3 mm. Let's assign these properties to respective components. For the frame component, select the 5 mm property in selection box. For the hopper component, assign the 3 mm thickness property. The material gets assigned automatically. Open the AutoMesh tab from 2D panel. We will select all the surfaces in entity selection box. Set the element size to 25. With all other settings as default, create the 2D mesh. Let's review the mesh to see if all the surfaces have been meshed properly and the mesh size is uniform. Click on return to exit auto mesh panel. As the components are meshed, we can hide the geometry to view only the mesh. Create a new component to store RBE2 rigid elements. Now open the Rigids tab from 1D panel. Set dependent node to multiple nodes and independent node to calculate node. Switch the drop down to faces. We will select the internal faces of the hopper as the load will be distributed on these regions. Create the rigid element. The location of the master node has been automatically calculated and it is clearly visible in the center of the geometry. We can now start setting up the boundary conditions for this analysis. The frame will be constrained at the lower end and a compressive load of 1 Newton will be applied to the RBE2 master node. The reason for using force magnitude as 1 Newton will be clarified later in this video. We will first create a linear static analysis load step and use it to define a linear buckling analysis. Let's take a look at how this is done. Create a new load collector to store single point constraints. Let's use the predefined views to orient the model as required. Now open the constraints tab from analysis panel. 
we will select all the nodes on the lower edge of the frame members. Check if all the required nodes have been selected. With all 6 degrees of freedom checked, create the constraints. Let's hide the SPCs for now. Create a new node collector for force. Open the forces tab from analysis panel. In the entity selection box, we will select the master node of the rigid element. Change the magnitude to 1 Newton and set direction vector as Y axis. As we want the force in negative direction, change the force magnitude to minus 1. Create the force. We can see the force vector and confirm that it is pointing in the correct direction. To combine these loads and constraints, create a new load step. Let's change the analysis type to linear static. Select the SPC collector in SPC field. Select the force collector in load section box. To define the buckling analysis, we need to specify the method to be used for buckling mode calculation. We will use the EIGRL card which enables the Langkos method for buckling analysis. Create a new load collector. Now change the card image to EIGRL. We will request 10 buckling modes to observe the buckling patterns for various load values. Now create a new load step. Change the analysis type to linear buckling. Select the SPC load collector in SPC selection box. In the stats sub buckling field, we will assign the linear static analysis load step. Select the EIGRL load collector in the method struct selection box. The buckling analysis has been defined. Press Ctrl F and search for the parameter card. Add it to the model setup. We will disable element quality check for this analysis by setting the check L option to no. The analysis setup is now complete. Let's save the model in a separate folder. Make sure to use underscore in place of space while entering all file names to avoid any errors during the analysis run. Open the Optistruct tab from Analysis panel. Set Export options to All and Run options to Analysis. Click on Optistruct to launch the solver. The analysis run is complete and we can view the results in Hyperview. Let's hide the results component to view the other components properly. From the contours panel, apply the displacement results to see if all the parts are connected. Now switch to the second subcase to visualize the buckling modes of the structure. Apply the results. Let's scale up the mode shapes using the deform tab for better visualization. Adjust the animation speed using the bottom slider and play the animation. We can clearly see the first buckling mode of the structure. Similarly, we can view all the buckling modes by selecting the required mode number. 
the f value given adjacent to the mode number is the corresponding buckling mode factor. We will later calculate the critical buckling load using this load factor. We have successfully performed the buckling analysis, but how do we interpret these results? The main objective was to find the critical buckling load of the mechanical hopper assembly. For a linear buckling analysis, the applied load magnitude does not matter. It can be regarded as simply a multiplying factor or scale factor. While post-processing the results, we observed that a buckling factor was mentioned adjacent to the buckling mode number. The first critical buckling load can be calculated by multiplying the applied load and the buckling factor for first mode shape. In our case, it is 1 into 1.1127 into 10 raised to 6, that is 1.1127 into 10 raised to 6 Newton, which is also equal to 1112.7 kN. As you can see, to simplify this calculation, we use the initial load magnitude as 1 Newton. Similarly, we can find all other critical failure loads which are equal to the mentioned F values in this case. A word of caution here. Linear buckling analysis does not consider the effects of material, geometry as well as boundary nonlinearity. It tends to over predict the strength of a structure by almost 10 to 15 percent. Therefore, it is always advisable to perform a nonlinear buckling analysis to get accurate results. And this is how we can perform a linear buckling analysis using Hypermesh and Optistruct. If you like this video, please hit the red subscribe button and give a thumbs up, it helps a lot. Make sure to follow me on social media to stay updated about latest video content. Thanks for watching.